Today I'm making 100% whole grain croissants. These are really good, and they're actually quite light and flaky, and way more nutritious and satisfying than the usual white flour variety. And they're not all that difficult to make, as long as you stick to a few simple instructions. As you will soon see, I'm far from a skilled pastry maker, but I've made these several times now, and while they're not going to win a beauty contest, they've yet to disappoint on a pure enjoyment level. All right, let's get started. You're going to be able to print the instructions and the ingredients for this recipe off our website. So for this video, I'm going to try to focus on just those things that I think might not be so easy to get across in writing. I've got all my ingredients laid out here. I've got a pound of butter that's warming up a bit so I can work with it later. I've got the whole wheat flour, sugar, salt, yeast, and I've got some milk that's warmed up to room temperature. This happens to be a heritage variety of hard red spring wheat called turkey red, which I milled myself. I've also used spelt for this recipe as well as half spelt, half kamut, and just regular modern red wheat. It's all good. So I'm going to combine the dry ingredients. And mix it up real well. And then mix that into the milk. You can certainly use a, an electric mixer for this, but I'm going to do it by hand just so you can get a better idea of the consistency of the dough. As you can see, this dough is quite soft and pliable and easy to knead. You'll want to knead it for a few minutes until the dough takes on a little bit of a sheen. When dough is real easy to knead like this, sometimes I just like to knead it in the bowl, but you actually might find it's easier to knead on the counter. So let's do that. I've been kneading this dough for about five minutes and it's starting to take on kind of a silky smooth finish. So it's ready to go to the next step, which is to put it back in the bowl and let it sit out for about a half an hour covered and then into the fridge for about two hours. Now we want to pound our butter into a square, about eight inches on a side. And this is best done when the butter is around 60 to 65 degrees. So what I do is I try to create an envelope to contain the butter that's about the size that I want it when it's done. That is eight inches square. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it get cold again, a little bit colder. And I'm gonna take it out about the same time I take out the dough to roll out. Now we're ready to start the main part of the recipe. and It's kind of fun. Now if the butter has been in the refrigerator for a while, you'll wanna take it out before you take the dough out of the refrigerator to allow the butter to get up to about 65 degrees. It's my experience that there are two important things to get right with this recipe. One is that the room temperature should be as cool as possible. If it's a really warm day, you'll want to crank up the air conditioning. And the other thing is, is that you want the butter to be pretty close to 65 degrees, and you'll need an instant read thermometer to check that. If the butter is too cold, 
It'll tend to crumble when you're rolling it out inside the dough, and that's not disastrous. But if it's too warm, it'll tend to ooze out, and that's more of a problem. So this butter has been out of the refrigerator long enough for it to get up to about 65 degrees, and now we're ready to go get the dough. Dough has been in the refrigerator for two hours, and it's actually already started to rise a little bit. And now we're gonna roll it into a square about 14 inches on a side. And don't ask me how you roll dough into a square, but we're gonna try to come close. about 15 inches on a square. I mean 15 inches on a side. That's about right. We'll see how this works. Now you want to put your butter in the middle with the uh, corners pointing towards the sides of the dough. Kind of like a diamond shape inside there. And then you want to fully enclose the butter inside the dough. And I forgot about this. You don't want any air bubbles in there if you can avoid it. I'm working kind of fast because you want to do this while the dough is cold and while the butter is not any warmer than it is. And you have to be a little bit generous with the flour because you don't want it sticking to the counter when you're rolling it out. Now you want to roll it out and fold it you know, letter style three times as you'll see here shortly. So now I'm rolling it into a, a uh, rectangle shape. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to check and make sure it's not sticking to the counter. This is really not a good shape. I mean, not a precise shape. But the thing I've noticed with this is every time I've made these, and I've made these several times now, is that each time I think I'm blowing it, and every time they turn out pretty good. So let's see if this one works as well. But I'm not too worried about it anymore, getting it just right, that is. Let's see how that looks. Fold it in thirds. Okay, so that's the first fold, and you're going to do this three more times. And that's where you get the lamination in laminated dough. Now you want to wrap it very well in saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever this is. And it goes into the refrigerator now for 45 minutes. While the dough is chilling in the refrigerator, let's make some chocolate batons because we want to make a couple of chocolate croissants. Again, the details of how to make this are going to be printable off the website. All we're doing here is bringing some water and sugar to a boil. Once it's boiling, just turn off the heat and add your bittersweet chocolate. Let it melt, stir it while it's melting and you're just gonna stir it until it's a nice smooth consistency. It's nice and smooth, there's no lumps. Now I'm just gonna let it cool a little bit so it stiffens up some so we can pipe it into the baton shapes. Now the chocolate has cooled somewhat. It's warm to the touch, but it's still liquefied. I'm gonna ladle it into a plastic bag and this is just an ordinary Ziploc plastic bag. If you have a, a dedicated piping, bag 
then use it by all means, but this is the poor man's version. And then you can just squish it into the corner of the bag and take a pair of scissors and snip the corner. I think I snipped it too, too big. But anyway, then you can just squeeze out a baton length or two or three. All right, that'll do. There we go. Put it in the refrigerator like this to get hard.